the passive differentiator. In the lab which goes with this tutorial we will set up uh, another RC circuit but this time instead of a DC source voltage we will use a square wave AC source from a signal generator. We'll connect uh, an oscilloscope to measure the voltage drop across the capacitor and use the scope second channel to measure the voltage, here's the circuit, to measure the voltage across the resistor which will be here, V out. Here are the values we will use for this experiment. We're going to use a 220 picofarad capacitor, a 100 ohm resistor. We're going to use a decade box so that we can see the effects of uh, changing this resistance value. Uh, the scope of the channel one of the of the oscilloscope will measure the will be measuring across the capacitor to get the capacitor voltage, and the second channel we will measure the voltage across the resistor. A uh, signal generator is going to put out a frequency, so this, sig uh, this square wave is going to uh, cycle at 10,000 uh, hertz, so 10,000 cycles a second. Uh, the voltage for the uh, signal generator, although it's probably not relevant here, is 50 millivolts, so it's very small um, input signal voltage. Now, instead of uh, referring to the equation to describe the actions of this circuit, I want to do a complete walkthrough using just the knowledge we now have about how charges flow between locations of differing voltage levels. So without using any maths, we can describe the whole process like so. With a 50 millivolt square wave input, the voltage pulse is high, stays high for a period, then returns to 0 volts and remains at 0 volts for a similar period before pulsing high again. So Basically, we're just going through. This is just a summary of what's happening. On the high voltage impulse here, so this is step one, the high voltage impulse, we can see we're moving along at zero, then we get a high pulse here, and then we remain at this level. So, uh, on the high voltage impulse, the capacitor initially acts like a short circuit for charge flow as, plates, as the plates on the capacitor are empty, so initially there is no voltage to measure across it. So the charge flow at this time is very fast through the whole circuit, which produces a short peak of voltage across R. So we get this uh, voltage peak across R, because the charge is just flowing right through, so all the voltage drops across R for a very short period. As charges fill up the plates, we get a voltage increasing across the capacitor, which acts in opposition to the source voltage. This then reduces the rate of charge flow. This flow, this flow charge rate will finally reduce to nothing once the capacitor voltage equals the supply voltage. At this point, the capacitor will charge no more, and since no charges are flowing, the voltage that was appearing across R is now reduced to zero. So uh, the voltage output is now at zero. This state will remain until square wave goes low, so we're going to remain here until we get to step two. Now step two, the input voltage, having not changed from its high state for some time, now abruptly drops back down to zero volts. As this occurs, the charge stored on the plates of the capacitor is now released and flows back out in opposite direction to how it came in. This generates a current in opposite direction through the resistor. The capacitor once again initially appears as a short circuit for charge flow, so we have maximum voltage dropped across R of opposite polarity. Very soon the capacitor is discharged so that no more voltage will be dropped across R until we get another positive, another positive pulse of the square wave. There is an almost magical feeling you get when you first see how such a simple setup as this can measure a signal's gradient using an oscilloscope. So this pattern will repeat all the while we have a square wave voltage input. The output is differential of the input. So the lab will show this circuit differentiating a square wave and also a sine wave with just this very basic circuit. Later we will do this in a more efficient way using uh, uh, what's called an op-amp. Uh, so, so the lab will come next and we'll go through exactly what we did here but you'll physically be able to see it and it's it's quite a surprise to think that you've just got two simple components that can produce this effect.